Hello everybody, welcome to Webby on Cars. Uh, today I am proudly driving and reviewing my very first press car from Ford Australia. Um, it's taken a while to get to this stage because we've had COVID and shortage of cars and other bits and pieces like that. So yeah, eventually uh, I've managed to get a press car from Ford Australia, which is really exciting. Being that most of you probably know that I work at a Ford dealership. Um, so it's nice to sort of get hold of cars that I can't normally get to drive throughout, you know, cars we have in stock at work, um, particularly something like this Escape plug-in hybrid. Um, because you can only buy these through, I think it's something like six dealerships in Victoria. Um, mine isn't one of them, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I normally don't get to drive cars like this. So it's really exciting to drive something a little bit different um, rather than the, the normal Escapes that I can get through work. So this is a little bit different. As I said, it's the uh, plug-in hybrid version of the Escape. Uh, if you're not familiar with what that means, instead of being a full electric car, something like a Tesla, um, this is a hybrid, something like a Camry would be, uh, but it's a plug-in hybrid. So instead of the engine charging the battery constantly, you can actually plug the car in as well uh, at a normal sort of plug socket in your garage or something like that, um, and use full electric, but then you've also got the petrol engine, so you can have them separately working independently, or you can have them both working together. Um, like a normal hybrid car would normally use. So that's what we're looking at today, basically. Uh, we're gonna review this Escape plug-in hybrid. Uh, we'll have a look around the car. We'll talk about the specifications, uh, the factory fitted options are also included on this particular model. Uh, but also we'll obviously take you for a drive because that's the big part of one of these cars. What's it like to drive? What's it like to live with? What's the real world fuel economy like? Because obviously that's important if you're considering uh, an EV or plug-in hybrid. Um, and then I'll give you my final thoughts and opinions at the end of the video. Should you buy the plug-in hybrid version of the Escape or just go and buy the regular petrol version? Um, so let's get started. Let's have a look around the outside of the car uh, and look at the specification of this Escape plug-in hybrid. Now in terms of where this plug-in hybrid sits in the Escape lineup, um, it actually mirrors the specification of the mid-range ST line model. So you start off with the base model, you've got ST line, then you've got Vignale as your three standard specifications. So as I said, this is based on the mid-range ST line and you get a couple of extra goodies included for the extra $15,000 that you pay for the plug-in hybrid. So we get a nice suede trimmed and leather trimmed interior. We also get a 10 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system and also an electric driver seat. Might not seem much, but they're nice little things that set this apart from the standard ST line. So exterior styling is exactly the same as the ST line. Um, so we get things like the body coloured cladding around the wheel arches, uh, down the side skirts as well, and then around to the back of the vehicle as well. Uh, we get the 18 inch grey alloy wheels. So these are over and above what you get on a standard base model escape. Um, also at the side here, you'll notice we've got this extra charging flap. We've got a petrol flap at the back of the car where you'd find on a standard escape. But we've also got this additional flap here where you can actually plug the vehicle in to charge it at your garage or your work um, to charge that battery up. Now under the bonnet is the hybrid system. So we've got a 2.5 litre four cylinder petrol engine and a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery. Combined together, they make 167 kilowatts. Ford doesn't actually give a nominated uh, torque figure for the vehicle because it varies throughout the rev range depending on whether you're using electric or petrol or both together. Um, so there's not a fixed figure for the torque figure. Um, this particular car, um, in terms of pricing, they start at 54,440. The vehicle we've got on test has got a couple of factory fitted options on it. The first one is what's called the ST line pack. So we get things like these matrix LED headlights. We also get a nice head up display. Uh, we get an electric tailgate. We've got heated seats. Um, so we do get some nice functions from that uh, ST line pack. The other thing we've also got is what's called a park pack. Uh, so you notice on here on the side of the vehicle, we've got these extra sensors. Uh, so that's for the semi-automatic uh, parking system. You also get a 180 degree camera at the front of the vehicle. And then when you open the doors, you get these little door guards that pop out. As soon as you open your door, so prevent you from scratching the edge of your door on something like a wall or another car or something like that. Um, which is a strange addition as a factory fitted option because you'd think something like that would be standard on maybe all models throughout the range. So it does seem a slightly odd thing to include, but nevertheless, it's a handy feature to have. 
Looking at this escape from a side angle, um, and you can see it's got a sort of quite a rounded body shape. Um, it's not one of these SUVs that's sort of very square and angular. Um, even things like the sort of slope of that back window is almost sort of coupe-like, as opposed to some which are very sort of angular and upright. Um, as I said earlier, all fully body coloured down, down the bottom of the vehicle, down the uh, sort of side skirts. Um, you've got this nice sort of gloss black on the sides of the windows uh, on the B pillar. We've obviously got things like keyless entry as well. We've got privacy glass, so some nice additional features uh, that you kind of expect when you're spending this sort of money. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we've got an electric tailgate as part of that ST line pack. Um, and it also allows you to wave your foot underneath so you've got hands-free operation of the tailgate. Um, that's actually quite handy if you're coming back with like a couple of bags um, of shopping, uh, something like that, or if your just hands are full in general. Um, it opens up, we've got 556 litres of a carrying capacity. Um, you've got a lever either side of the boot, which you can literally pull down to extend your boot space. And with both seats are folded, you've got 1,468 litres. So you've got ample space for carrying pretty much anything you'd need. Um, included with the car, you've obviously got the charging cable here. Um, that's the one literally just plugs into your plug socket in your garage or somewhere in your house. Um, it takes around sort of three to three and a half hours to get a full charge out of the car. Um, you can set that up through the Sync 3 infotainment system inside, or you can use the Ford Pass app on your phone. Um, that's something that's really, really useful and something I'd highly recommend um, whether you've got a plug-in escape or whether you've got a normal escape, the Ford Pass app is sensational. All my customers absolutely love it and I think it's great too. In terms of a spare wheel, uh, obviously that's under the little shelf here. Uh, it's a space saver spare wheel. You've got your jack and all your toolkit and everything in there as well. It's a shame there's no space to actually store the charging cable though, because uh, the charging cable just ends up sitting in the boot and you know sort of rattling around when you're driving. Um, even if they gave you like a little carry case for the charging cable, that would be quite nice. Um, a lot of other cars I've driven, the charging cable comes in this nice little sort of fabric bag or, or what have you. So um, it's a shame that it's kind of just there in your boot. Um, yeah, I'm sure it wouldn't have cost much to put it in a little bag or find a little storage space um, down by the spare wheel. Um, you do get things like a, a 12 volt socket in the back as well, which is quite handy. We've got some tie down points. Um, so yeah, the actual practicality of the car in the back is actually quite decent. Now, other things to note at the back of the vehicle, uh, you'll notice the little blue triangle on the number plate, which says that this is an EV. Um, and then you also got the plug-in hybrid badge uh, just on the driver's side at the bottom of the tailgate. Uh, coming down the bottom, we've actually got two proper exhausts. So having one either side does give it quite a sporty appearance. Um, and I do quite like this sort of black gloss finish to the tailgate as well. Um, so overall, I think it's a really good looking car. Now before we go inside and have a look at the interior of this Escape plug-in hybrid, um, if you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell to find out when the next video review goes live. If you've got any questions or comments about this plug-in hybrid, leave them below in the comment section for me and I'll answer any questions for you as soon as I can. Right, that's said and done. Let's have a look at the inside and I can show you some of those extras you get over the standard petrol version of the ST line. Right, so now let's have a wander inside this Escape plug-in hybrid, have a look at the interior. Uh, so we start off with the obvious stuff, we've got the window and mirror switches here, uh, which is sort of fairly standard. There are the lovely sports seats, as I said earlier, they've got this sort of lovely leather on the outsides and this lovely suede in the centre section as, hip as well. Uh, the nice red contrast stitching, uh, just to give it a bit of a sporty accent. Um, and it does feel a little bit more premium than the standard petrol ST line, which just gets cloth seats. Um, so there's definitely a big difference in the interior sort of seat quality uh, with this plug-in hybrid model. Uh, also, as I mentioned earlier, we've got fully electric seat on the driver's side, uh, including lumbar support, which is quite nice as well. Uh, but yeah, the general layout of the car, as you can see, it looks exactly the same as a standard ST line. Uh, so let's jump in, have a look at all the controls and features of the interior. All right, so this is the view from the driver's seat then. Um, so we've got this lovely perforated leather steering wheel in front of us with the red stitching uh, and also the flat bottom there as well. Uh, we've got the buttons there for the adaptive cruise control and some of the safety bits and the volume. Uh, these buttons here operate some of the details on the screen in front of you. Uh, and then you can answer and end phone calls and skip tracks on your, your music 
uh, and voice control button there. If we bring the car into life, now the nice thing about an electric car is there's no noise obviously, because uh, it's dead quiet. So there is the large digital, digital display in front of the driver. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot of information. Let's just get rid of that. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's currently showing my trip computer. Uh, I've driven a total of 188 kilometers, as you can see just there in the middle. Uh, and 163 of them so far have been pure electric. Uh, so my average fuel consumption is one liter per hundred, uh, which is just ridiculous. Um, pretty much as good as a full electric car, obviously. Um, now down in that bottom right hand corner, you can see I've got a range of 715 kilometers. And if I just use electric purely on its own, I've got a range of 46 kilometers left. Um, so that's actually not too terrible, to be honest. Um, let's just zoom out a little bit so we can show you the rest of the display. Um, so yeah, over on the left hand side, you've got the traditional uh, sort of digital speedo with a needle that goes around for what looks like a traditional speedo uh, as opposed to digital. Uh, the left side of that is the engine temperature gauge. Uh, over on the right hand side, this little display here shows me how much power I'm using from the battery. But when you're braking from zero, it goes down. So it actually shows you that it's putting power back into the battery, which is quite cool. Uh, something I'll be able to show you later on when we go for a drive, because uh, I'll put a little camera there uh, just to sort of show what's going on whilst we're driving. Uh, the, the big sort of dial over there on the right hand side uh, is actually your fuel tank. So I've got a full tank of fuel, which is what it had when I picked it up last week from Ford. Um, and yeah, I've used 25 kilometers worth of petrol. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, so that's the, the main sort of display in front of the driver. Not sure whether you'll be able to see, there you can just about the head up display in front of the driver as well. Uh, that's part of the ST line pack that I was talking about earlier. Uh, then we come over to the SYNC 3 infotainment system. Um, it would be nice if Ford put the SYNC 4 system in there. So that's the new system that's coming out in things like the new range of the Everest uh, and the Raptor. Uh, I suspect that will come when we get a facelift of the Escape, which I guess can't be too far away now, maybe next year or something like that. Uh, but let's just zoom out a little bit and show you more of the rest of the center console. Uh, so just below that, we've got a couple of the buttons for the audio system. Uh, so you can skip sort of preset radio stations or tracks on things like your Spotify or whatever music streaming system you're using. Um, you've also got a button there so you can bring on the front camera uh, because that's part of the pack uh, that I mentioned earlier. Just down below that then, we've got the climate control buttons. Um, so pretty standard stuff. Uh, but we also get the heated seats, um, if you remember from the ST line pack. Um, which is actually quite nice. Um, on a day like today when it was something like six degrees when I got in the car, uh, that was actually fairly welcome. Um, then just below that, we've got the place where you've got a bit of storage. Uh, as you can see, we've got two USB-A charging points here. Uh, we also a 12 volt plug socket there as well. Uh, you've then got a wireless charging pad and an extra bit of storage here. Um, the wireless charging pad is obviously quite good to have because you can charge an additional phone. Um, unfortunately, SYNC 3, which is the infotainment system, the car, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you do have to plug your phone in. Um, hence, I've got this cable plugged in to the one of the USB ports. Um, when eventually it gets upgraded to SYNC 4, then obviously that will become a wireless Apple CarPlay. Um, like I said, we've got in the Rangers and the Everest. Uh, then we come down to, just move that out of the way, uh, the rotary gear selector. I'm not sure how well that's coming out on screen because it's fairly bright. Um, but yeah, just a rotary gear selector, so park, reverse, neutral, drive. Uh, the L button is like an, um, a mode where you can sort of regenerate the battery a little bit quicker. Uh, then we've got the electric handbrake and the auto hold function for the handbrake. Then below that we've got a few extra buttons. Um, so this one here is your drive mode selection button. So every time you press that, it changes the drive mode um, on the digital instrument cluster in front of the driver. So if I just give you a quick look at that. So every time I press it, so we start off, we are in normal mode. Let me just zoom in a little bit for you on there. So yeah, we start in normal mode. And then each time we press it, so we now get economy. We've got sport, slippery, if you fancy doing any sort of minor off-road driving 
snow and sand assist, so that will adjust things like your traction control, your um, input of your throttle. And then we've got normal again. So there's a few driving modes there you can choose from. Let's just go back to the buttons down here. Uh, we've then got a button there for the head-up display. So that would allow you to turn the head-up display on and off, but also brings up a menu where you can adjust uh, things like the brightness of the sort of text uh, and also sort of the height, and you can adjust, um, you know, sort of how it's sitting depending on how tall you are as a driver. The next one along, that's the semi-automatic uh, parking function, which is part of that park pack that I mentioned earlier as well. Um, that's actually quite a handy feature, particularly if you come across a parking space where you think it's a little bit tight. Uh, the car will be able to tell you whether it fits or not and then obviously do the parking for you. Uh, the next one below that is where you can turn off the parking sensors, so you're just using the cameras on their own. Uh, and then we've got the different EV modes. So again, let me take you back to the instrument cluster, and I'm going to cycle through the different EV modes that we can choose from. So when I press the button for the first time, it brings up the four different modes that we've got, and it shows the mode that I'm currently using. So we're in automatic EV, so that means the car will choose between petrol and electric, uh, depending on what it, feel, it feels it needs uh, for the type of driving that you're doing. The next one along is pure electric. So if I choose that, the engine won't cut in at all unless the battery goes to zero. Uh, then we've got an option what's called EV later. So you can actually choose to reserve a certain amount of battery power. For example, if you're going down the freeway and you want to reserve all your battery power for driving around town, you can actually choose to have it at 100% for you know, saving your battery for later, and then once you get into town, you can just use a battery and you've got 100% there ready for driving. And then the last one is what they call EV charge. So it's the, the battery and the petrol engine working at the same time. And then the petrol engine will actually charge the battery whilst you're driving along. Uh, again, handy if you're driving on the freeway. So that will give you the best economy for driving on the freeway, and that will leave you the full battery usage for when you're driving around town so you actually get the best of both worlds. Um, so that's a really handy button to have just down there on the centre console. Uh, so coming back to other bits and pieces around here, we've got a couple of cup holders here as well, and this tiny sort of cup holder in the middle, um, if you've got one of those sort of small um, sort of piccolo coffees or espresso or what have you. Um, the armrest in the middle actually slides, so we can actually slide this backwards and forwards, so depending on how tall you are or short, as you are in my case, um, you can adjust that, which is quite nice. Uh, if we lift that up, we've got a little coin tray. Uh, then we've got a bit of storage in there. There's no USBs or power sockets in there, unfortunately, which it seems a bit of a shame, um, because that would be an ideal place to put your phone whilst you're driving along and um, obviously charging up at the same time. Now here on the Sync 3 system, there's a couple of different buttons you'll notice. Um, so these two down the bottom, which relate to the fact that this is an electric vehicle. So this one here on the left hand side will show you the state of the battery as you're driving. And if we come back and show you the other one, this is your charging options. So this is where you can set up preferences of how the battery charges, when it charges, uh, and that type of thing. So I've currently got it set that it will bring on uh, the, the heating for the vehicle. So ready when I want to leave for work tomorrow morning at 10 to eight. Um, if we go into charge preferences, you can also do things like set up charge time setups. Uh, so if we go into that, so I've set mine so that it charges between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. every morning, and then I want it to charge to 100% before I leave for work or leave for the, the journey that I'm going on. Um, so that's actually quite a handy function to have. So even if you plug it in at night, so you can plug it in before you go to bed, but it won't actually start charging until the time I've chosen, which is four o'clock in the morning. So it doesn't mean that it's charging from the minute you plug it in and then it's still there and then it switches itself off. It just means that it turns on at 4 a.m. and switches off at seven, uh, which is actually quite a neat function. It just means you're not um, doing any potential damage to the battery. So the other, other option there is the departure time setup. So because this car's got the forward pass system, if you put in, like I have this time for 7.50, it will use the forward pass remote settings to actually um, get the car ready for you for that particular time of day. So what that means is it will bring on the heat in, it will bring on the heated seats for me. Um, so when I get in the car in the morning, it's all nice and warm and cozy for my drive to work. 
um, particularly handy if you park your car outside. Um, I'll park mine in the garage, but even so, it's still nice um, that it gets my car all nice and warm and ready for my journey to work. Now, in terms of driving position, um, as we saw earlier, we've got full electric adjustment of the driver's side seat, uh, so we can get the seat just exactly where we want it to be. Um, these seats are really comfortable, by the way. I love the softness and the, mo the comfortable um, sort of feeling from this suede in the middle of the seats, um, but they're also supportive as well, which is really nice. So I reckon that's probably where I'd have my seat. Uh, steering wheel, we've got adjustment for height and reach as well by the little lever uh, to the left-hand side. Um, so yeah, really nice, comfortable driving position. Visibility out the front is superb. We've got nice, decent sized windows at the side as well. Um, decent sized side mirrors, which has got blind spot monitor as standard, uh, which is also good to see. Um, but yeah, the general view when you're driving is really good. Um, although you've got this fairly thick A pillar at the front, it doesn't pose too much of a blind spot for most people. Um, that obviously depends on how tall you are and where you sit in the car. Uh, but no, the general driving position is really, really good. So now I've got that set up, let's have a look in the back and actually see how much leg space that gives us. So coming into the back, the first thing you notice is how nice and wide the rear doors open to actually get in. The ceiling is not too low, so you don't really hit your head when you're getting in. Just got to remember to obviously duck. Um, you've got decent sized windows on the side as well, so visibility out the back uh, is really good, uh, particularly out the sides. You've got a great view in front of you. Um, the big front windscreen obviously lets lots of light in. Um, so you don't feel too claustrophobic sat in the back here. Rear leg space, as you can see, I've got absolutely acres. Um, got plenty of leg room. I can fit my feet underneath the driver's seat. Um, that's quite nice for when you're going on a long journey. You can stretch your legs out a little bit. Um, the back seat does adjust backwards and forwards. There's a bar underneath. So if you want to extend how much boot space you've got, whilst carrying rear passengers, you can simply grab hold of the little lever underneath, bring your seat forward a little bit, and you've still got plenty of leg room, but you've increased the amount of carrying capacity that you've got. The other handy feature that you've got is down the side of the seat, there's a little lever which you can pull up and change the backrest as well. So if your rear passengers want to relax a bit, maybe have a little sleep, so your rear passengers can actually lean back a little bit further and make for a slightly more comfortable seating position. We've also got nice things like a couple of rear air vents down here in the centre and also a USB-A and a USB-C fast charging point. So rear passengers are quite well catered for. We've also got the obligatory fold down centre armrest with a couple of cup holders in the middle as well. Uh, so another great feature for rear passengers. Um, and then on the outer two seats, it's got the ISOFIX mounting points for baby seats. All right, so now we're going to take this escape plug-in hybrid for a bit of a drive. Um, I'll describe what it's like um, as you're driving along, as in terms of how it feels, what the ride comfort is like, um, you know, how it copes with the sort of corners. Um, but I'll also try some of the different driving modes as well, uh, so you can see what they're going to do in terms of how the car drives, what it does to the battery, uh, and also the petrol engine as well. Um, so yeah, let's head out for a drive and uh, test all those bits and pieces out. Well, most electric cars, you can just hear the sort of the whir of electric motors as you're driving along. And so we've got it in standard electric mode at the minute. Uh, so there's no sort of uh, help from the engine whatsoever. Um, so yeah, inside, lovely and quiet. Uh, you can hear a little bit of sort of road noise coming through the cabin. Um, but then you do tend to notice that when you're driving an electric car, because you can't hear anything else. So everything else is kind of amplified. So I've got a little camera just here in front of the digital display uh, to sort of film what's going on. Um, so as you can see over to the left, um, we are kind of in a 60 zone, so sticking to the speed limit. Um, so yeah, over to the left hand side, tells us what obviously speed we're doing. Uh, on the right hand side where you've got that dial um, for the sort of power and the kilowatts, it's showing either how much power we're taking from the battery or if I was to brake, it then shows how much power we're putting back into the battery. Um, so that's actually really handy to see as you're driving along. Um, my range is currently 44 kilometers. Um, that will obviously deplete as we drive a bit further. 
unless I put the vehicle in through a mode where the engine will kick in and then start to charge the battery. Handling around corners is really impressive. Um, this plug-in hybrid version weighs about 200 kilos more than just the pure petrol ST line scope. So it's interesting to see that it doesn't really affect the handling. Um, and in fact, in some ways, that extra weight makes the car feel a little bit more sort of settled on the road. Um, but the steering as you go around corners is, is nice and direct. Um, it doesn't feel sort of disconnected from the front wheels, uh, which sometimes they do when you're driving a car where the steering is a little bit too assisted. I've driven other sort of fully electric vehicles where you can definitely feel the weight of the batteries you know, when you go around corners and that type of thing. Um, I've only driven a couple of plug-in electric hybrids um, and this feels very, it's very similar to those in terms of you know, those few hundred extra kilos don't really affect the weight uh, or the drivability of the car too much. So let's pop the car into one of the different driving modes. So as I said, at the minute we're in fully electric, so at the moment we're in auto, I thought we were in fully electric uh, because it just came on in electric. Uh, but I'm going to go past the fully electric mode uh, and I want to show you the EV charging mode. So this is where the engine will kick in automatically uh, and then we'll actually charge the battery as we're driving. So when you switch between the different driving modes, uh, when the petrol engine actually kicks in, it's pretty seamless. There's no sort of jolts or anything like that. Um, so it's like most hybrid systems, it's pretty seamless when it switches between you know, just electric and then the, the petrol engine kicking in as well. Uh, so my range is currently 40 kilometers. Uh, so that either shouldn't go down, uh, but it may increase depending on you know, how much braking I do or how much power the engine can put back into the battery. But it's interesting that although the engine is now on, there's no more difference of noise level inside the cabin which is actually quite impressive because normally you'd hear the engine as well once you know, that switch is on. If you push it hard, then obviously you're gonna get a bit of engine noise coming into the cabin. But just on a sort of normal gentle drive, it makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. So yeah, put your foot into the throttle a little bit and you can hear the engine. Um, yeah, so that, that 2.5 engine is obviously doing a bit of work to get up hills and bits and pieces like that. Um, it's got a CVT transmission, so it's not a normal torque converter or dual clutch transmission uh, that you might find in normal petrol engines. So you change it to a torque converter because they're a little bit more efficient, uh, better suited to this sort of application. You can definitely feel both of them working together really nicely. Uh, so the engine and the electric motor are working together uh, to give you that full 167 kilowatt. Now you'll see the, uh, the average fuel consumption has crept up slightly. Uh, so I'll show you from the other camera, so it's now sitting at 1.2 litres per 100. Um, you certainly can't complain about that. It's, um, it's ridiculously uh, fuel efficient, this car. So now I've taken my foot off the brake and I'm just coasting because I'm coming to a hill and I'm going down. Uh, you can see in that right hand display uh, the battery is actually charging even though you know, literally just by taking my foot off the brake the kinetic energy coming from the braking system will actually put power back into the battery um, so that obviously helps keep charge so when you actually get to a town you can just switch to fully electric mode and then you've got all the electric power you want just for putting around town so from that we can see how efficient the plug-in hybrid version of the escape can be and also the fact that it's still good fun to drive. But I guess the real big question is, do you spend the 15,000 odd dollars to get the plug-in hybrid over the petrol version? Well, I guess a lot of it would depend on personal preference. You know, maybe how long you're gonna keep the vehicle for, because obviously the longer you keep it, the more money you're gonna save in terms of fuel, eco fuel economy. Um, or you might just be one of those people that likes electric vehicles, you know, likes the fact that they're really 
quiet and efficient. Um, so yeah, that, that might just be your reason for buying one. Um, for me personally, I would definitely get the benefit of using it fully electric all the time because my journey to work is 11 kilometers each way. So I'd be able to take full advantage of that 60K range on pure electric every day. So just by charging it up maybe every other night, that would probably work for me. Um, so I'd be able to take full advantage of using it in fully electric. Whether it's worth yeah, 15 grand more than a petrol, that's an awful lot of petrol. Um, you know, to sort of spend money on us fifteen thousand dollars worth of petrol. Um, but like I say, it could just be that you prefer an electric car. Um, but you want the best of both worlds. Because like I say, you can use the petrol engine on the freeway just like any other normal car and let it charge the battery whilst you're driving. And then when you get into town, put it on full electric mode um, and then you cruise around in, in perfect silence using absolutely no fuel at all. So it is a lot more fuel efficient than the standard petrol escape. Um, because yeah, a petrol escape, certainly around town, you'd be looking at least double digits uh, in terms of fuel economy, uh, maybe a little bit more. But yeah, it would take a long time to get our $15,000 back uh, in fuel costs. Safety features are obviously well catered for. Um, you've got obviously the standard autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection. Uh, you've got your blind spot monitor, your adaptive cruise control, uh, reverse camera, front and rear sensors. Um, it's also got the front, front camera from that park pack that we mentioned earlier as well. Um, so yeah, it's got, it's got everything you need basically. Uh, and to, uh, to be fair, it's what you come to expect here in 2022. Um, if you found a car without any of those features, you'd be fairly surprised. In terms of running costs for this car, a few other bits and pieces are worth mentioning. Like all other Ford cars, it comes with a five year unlim unlimited mileage warranty. Uh, there's also an additional warranty for the battery as well. Services and costs are exactly the same as any other Escape. Uh, so it's cap price servicing for the first four years at uh, 299 per service. So thanks for joining me for the review of the Ford Escape plug-in hybrid. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like. Also subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell to find out every time a new video goes live and hit me up in the comments below with any questions or comments you've got about this escape. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.